Church, welcome to Regeneration, the English Ministry of Chinese Christian Church of New Jersey. Let's calm our hearts for worship this morning. Call to worship is from Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. And it says, In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Heavenly Father, God, we come to your house eager to hear your voice, hear your Holy Spirit speak to us. Father, please anoint the worship, anoint Pastor Milo, and anoint the baptism. We pray this in your son Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. Let's all rise and worship together. Sovereign plan, 
Raise up a chosen generation that will march through the land. All of creation is longing for your unveiling of you release your anointing oh God let this be the hour let your glory fall in this room let it go forth from here to the nations let your frame rest in this place as we gather to seek your faith. Ruler. Ruler of the nation the world has yet to see For release of your promise, the church in victory, turn to us, Lord, and touch us, make us strong in your mind. Let your glory fall in this room. Let it go forth from here to the nations. Let your fragrance rest in this place as we gather to seek your face. Let your glory fall in this room. Let it go forth from here to the nation. Let your fragrance rest in this place as we gather to seek your face pray together. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just ask for your glory, Lord, just to rest in this room, God, and for your fragrance to rest in this place, God, and that it wouldn't just stay here, but that it would go out over all the nations, Lord, across this world. Um, and so, God, we pray as we listen to your word, God, as we uh, sing more songs and, and come into your presence, Lord, that, um, yeah, that your glory would be here in this very sanctuary. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
You must say three, okay? Three. BBS crew and children. Let's give them another round of applause. Yeah. 
It always makes me very, uh, very happy and joyful to see our children worshiping the Lord and leading us in doing so. Um, as our children are dismissed to Regent Sunday School, I'd like to invite our guest speaker, Missionary Milo Cho, um, to give God's word today. It, it's really, really hard to follow something like that. <laughs> um, I'm trying to see here. Trying to connect. Okay, while I'm trying to get my remote to connect here. Um, this, uh, my, my name is Milo Cho, and um, I actually um, am Korean-American. I was born in Korea, grew up in the United States, and my wife is actually Thai-American. She was, is Thai, and she was, um, oh, she was born in the United States, and she grew up in the U.S. as well. And, um, and this is our family. We actually have been in Thailand for, I don't know why my remote's not connecting... Um, maybe I can use my phone. Um, we've been in Thailand for about 18 years now, and, um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know why my connector is. Um, we've been in Thailand for 18 years now, and in fact, when we first visited CCCNJ, um, I actually got connected to CCC and Jay um, because um, I, my family, we're really good friends with Manny and Julia, and in fact, uh, they're um, they're living in the same town, and now actually our families attend the same school as they do. And so when our family left for Thailand, this is what we looked at like, like in 2005, and this is what we look like now. About 18 years ago, we moved to Thailand into the mission field, and in fact, uh, our youngest, who is right now. Um, a junior in high school, he's actually classmates. Again, some, many of you, some of you may remember Manny Lowe. Um, Manny's oldest son, Noah, and our youngest, who's on the far left, Christopher, are actually really, really good friends, and they're classmates as well. And so it's really, um, it's interesting for me to think about our connection to CCCNJ and how we've known different people through our time here as well. Um, our family, we've been there in Thailand for 18 years. Right now, three of my kids, on the, on the three on the far right, uh, on the right, they are now studying or working in the States. Our youngest is with us in Thailand, and in fact, my wife, and our youngest already went back to Thailand a couple of weeks ago because um, in Bangkok, international schools started uh, this week. I know that in New Jersey, you guys still have some time off before school starts. Um, but that's a little bit about our, our family. Uh, we are living in Bangkok, Thailand, and you can see this is actually the formal name, the full, full name of Bangkok, Thailand. And even in the name of Thailand, some of you are like, wow, you can't even pronounce that. It's, it's really, really, really long. But even in the name of Thailand, there's a lot of history and a lot of the spiritual significance of the Thai culture and the people that are living there as well. As we're living in Thailand, um, the country itself is about 65 million, but we are working with the Bangkok Thai, and that represents about 24% of the country are living in Bangkok. So if you were to, let's say, ride on the public sky train, and if there were, let's say, 1,000 people on that sky train in Bangkok, and as represented by this little diagram here, uh, if you were to pick like a thousand random people, um, the number of people on that train out of a thousand who would be a Christian, you'd be lucky if you had about eight or nine people out of a thousand who were Christians in Bangkok. And so even though the gospel has been in Thailand for several hundred years, in terms of the openness that people have to the gospel, it's still very, very, very few people who've actually become Christians. And in fact, when we, I shared this, uh, this statistic before 18 years ago, it was actually only about three people out of a thousand in Bangkok that were Christians. And so in fact, in the past 18 years, God has really been working to bring many people to come to know the Lord to where now... It used to be three when we first went to Thailand. Now it's like eight or nine. And so it's really an encouragement to see how God is working in Bangkok. Uh, and for many people know that I was actually teaching at the university. That was my platform to get to know university students and to do evangelism and discipleship there at the university setting. But <clears throat> we were in COVID lockdown for three years. Uh, I don't know how long you guys were on um, online teaching. 
How many guys were, how, how long was online teaching here in New Jersey? About two years? Okay, like, so I was teaching online for three years. And during that time online teaching, it was really, really tough. Um, usually I was the only one that had my camera on and uh, I never got to see my students. And so it really, really put a hindrance on the whole purpose for why I was teaching at the university. Because for me, teaching at the university was really a means to get to know students, to build relationships with them, and then to do evangelism with them. But because we were online, that really put a big, big damper into our ministry. And so what happened was we started looking into some other opportunities for ministry as we were there. But as I was cleaning up my desk, because I just finished up my time at the university, um, and I sent in my resignation, and so when I was cleaning up my desk, I was sorting through, um, and if you look at this, uh, these name cards, each student that I had, I would have them write their name and a photo information card for me to get to know them and to learn their names and faces. Um, and actually, I also did this because I did this to try to get to know them, to build relationships with them, but then also to pray for them as well. So when I'm doing proctoring or if I'm sitting in like Bangkok traffic, I would pull out these name cards and I would try to pray for these different students that were in my class. And when I was cleaning up my desk, I didn't count them all, but I calculated out. It was probably about 4,500 of these that I have here. And then if I were to count the three years that I was in online classes, I probably had contact with about 5,000 uh, Thai students as well as Chinese students that were in my classes. And when I thought about that, it's just, I was really struck with an amazing sense of just amazing privilege, the fact that, that, that for about 5,000 people that I may have been the first and maybe even the only person to ever have lifted up this person's name to the Lord as it was uh, as well. And so it's really a blessing as I think about how we've shifted our ministry, this chapter of working with students, and now moving into a new chapter, no longer uh, primarily evangelism and discipleship, but now it's more primarily in, um, uh, in terms of leadership and Christian leadership development. So if you, during COVID, I had the opportunity to get involved with this ministry called City to City. And this was established by the, the late Pastor Tim Keller, and it's a gospel-centered ministry, gospel renewal ministry that focuses on planting churches. And um, we had just started this ministry, uh, this um, organizing this and translating the materials into Thai. And as you can see here, we had our first intensive training where we had trained up about 11 teams to plant churches around the Bangkok area. So in this next year, this, these group of people uh, uh, in, in 11 teams will be planting 11 different churches around the Bangkok area. And so I'm involved with that. And also, in addition to that, I got involved um, with a church planting team through the church that we were attending. And we had a vision to plant a church in this area called RE. Now, I know that hipster in America doesn't mean means a certain thing. But in Thailand, hipster primarily means like new and trendy. That's kind of like what that means. That's how Thai people use that. And in this area of RE, it's known to be very, very trendy with lots of really, really nice, chic uh, cafes and restaurants. And it's a place that a lot of young working people like to work and live in that area. And so um, what happened was in August of 2020, um, a Thai pastor at the church we were attending, he asked me and our family, he asked our family to join with him in planting a new church in the Ari area, a Thai church in the, new, in the Ari area. And so we then started Gospel City Bangkok during the beginning of the pandemic of all things. Um, and so we actually, because we were small enough, we were able to meet in person and sometimes we did hybrid, sometimes we did online, and we started meeting during the pandemic, of all things. It's kind of crazy as we did it, but that's how the Lord had led us. And uh, at this point right now, this is kind of what it looks like now on Sundays after about two years of worship uh, as well in, in church. And so this is Gospel City Bangkok. I'm involved in um, the leadership and the teaching at the church. And then as we have worship on Sunday, what happens is after our worship is done, at about one o'clock, our church transforms then into a cafe. And so the rest of the week, on the weekdays, the, the space that we use is actually a cafe. It's a very, very trendy, it's, it's a really, really good coffee. Okay, I, I kind of learned to become a little bit more of a coffee snob. Uh, and we, I've noticed in America, there are not that many cafes except for Starbucks, and Dunkin' Donuts. Does Dunkin' Donuts count as a cafe? Uh, but there's pretty much just Starbucks here in America. 
But if you were to go to Thailand, there's so many different cafes. We have cat cafes, raccoon cafes, even though raccoons don't live in Thailand. We have raccoon cafes, we have DIY cafes, we have planting cafes, all different kinds of cafes. And so it's a very, very trendy thing. And so to reach that target demographic of young people, we started a cafe as part of our church. And we actually named it 34.8. And it comes from Psalm 34.8 that says, taste and see that the Lord is good. And so we found that to be a great way to reach out to people because, and, and as you can see in the pictures, it's very, very Instagrammable, okay? People, young people will come and they'll order their coffee, they'll take out their phone once they get it, and then, you know, it's got to cool, right, because it's too hot. And they go around and take their Instagram pictures, and that's really been the, the, the biggest way for us to, to promote our church and our cafe through Instagram and through Facebook. And so if you want to follow us, okay, you can do that as well, 34, 8. You just spell it out just like the sign, uh, oops, just like the sign that's uh, in, this, in this picture. You can find us on Instagram. Not now, after, okay? Um, um, and so we, like, for example, we found that if, if we were to invite someone to come to church, a Buddhist, many, many times they'll say, oh, but I'm not a Christian. Can I come to church? And we'd say, oh, yeah, of course you can. And when they see that our church looks like this, it's a lot easier for them to want to come. And it's a lot less threatening. And in fact, in our cafe, we have no crosses, no nothing in there to show that it's a church. And, and so it's a very safe place for people to come. And in fact, in our services, we have about 30, 45, almost 50 people not coming now. And usually about three people each week are new. And many of them found out because of social media or they found out through something like that. And so uh, even this young lady, she was actually a student of mine at the university. And then after she graduated and now she's working, she started coming to church and then she became a Christian. And then she got baptized just a few months ago uh, on the day that we celebrated two years anniversary of our church. And so um, if you're ever in Bangkok, and we know that many people are traveling these days because COVID is done and people are traveling now. Uh, if you're ever in Bangkok, you go to Taiwan and you swing through. Bangkok is very, very close. <laughs> it's very, very close. And um, you can come to visit us on Sunday and join us for worship. Uh, I might be preaching that day. And if I am, because um, I'm preaching in Thai, uh, and, or, or my Thai, the Thai pastor, and my wife is usually the translator, you can come, enjoy a great cup of coffee, and worship with us and see what the Lord is doing in Bangkok, Thailand uh, as well. And so we're just really, really thankful for the many years of partnership that CCCNJ has had with us. Because really, it's, it's really impossible for us to be in Thailand without the partnership and prayers of CCCNJ. And, and I know that Thai food is really popular. How many of you like Thai food? Okay. How much does Pad Thai cost here? I, I heard it can be up to like $15. Is that right? That's cheap? Whoa. Okay. In Thailand, on the street, you can buy Pad Thai, really good Pad Thai, probably better than the one here, for a buck fifty. A dollar fifty. Uh, so, but uh, the reason I show this is not to make you hungry. But I know that a lot of people enjoy eating Thai food, and we always ask that if you are eating Thai food and you, many of you, pray before your meal, please remember us and please remember Thailand when you pray for your fifteen dollar pad thai. Okay, uh, and 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 know that you could come to Thailand and get really good pad thai for a buck fifty. Okay. Um, so again, we're really, really thankful for the opportunity to have the partnership that we have. It's been, it's been, the last time my family was here was in 2015. And so it's been a really long time for us to even to visit CCCNJ. And we're really thankful that I was able to make it here uh, for the Sunday. And just to even be able to share the word of God with you. So let me pray for us one more time before we look into the word. Our Heavenly Father, we ask that you would speak to us, teach us through your word. Help us to know where we are in terms of the body of Christ and in the, the big plans that you have for us and for your body, teach us what, 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 what part we might have in that and even what regen might have, what part regen might have in this big plan that you have as well. So we thank you for these things. We thank you for this morning. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> okay, so let's go through this kind of quickly. So this is from um, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. And I'll be reading this from the ESV. Oh, you'll actually, I actually preached this message uh, um, early on in our church. And so you can see, I originally preached it in Thai. I'm going to do it in English. Uh, but you can see what my PowerPoints look like because these are pretty much the same PowerPoints that I used when I preached this before. Um, 
from verse uh, 15. For this reason, because I've heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I, have not ceased, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revel revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things, to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Now, this was actually in a series when at our church we were talking about what covenant community looks like. We were talking about the purpose of the church and in the big plan that God has, how does that really, really work? And so um, the word covenant itself, this is actually a snap screenshot from... Um, from the Bible Project video. I'm not going to show you the video itself. But the word covenant, in the way that it's used during biblical times, had this idea that there were two parties in this covenant. Usually, as we think about in the Bible, there was God, and then there were his people. And then with that, there were commitments and promises that each side made. They said, I promise to do this if you do this. Something like that. And so the idea of covenant, in the way that God had designed it, it was really a group project. Okay, now, I'm not sure how you guys feel about group projects. Okay, we have a lot of students here. How many of you, or working people, how many of you like group projects? Raise your hand. Wow. Only a few of you. I saw a few going like, no. Okay, how many of you don't like group projects? Raise your hand. So interesting. Now, I was a teacher in the university for 16 years, and... There were two kinds of students, usually, two kinds of students. The ones who like group projects and the ones who don't like group projects. And, and, and the ones who like group projects, not always. For the few of you who like group projects, this is probably isn't you. But there are many of those group project students who would be like, I like group projects because I get to benefit from the fruits of my friend's labor. Okay? That, 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 so they would be the ones who would kind of like, they kind of take it easy while everyone else does all the work. So, so for example, my kids, my, my children really don't like group projects. Because they say, I end up doing all the work, or I don't trust them because their work stinks. Okay? Like that. And, and you know what? When we think about covenant as being a group project with God, when we think about God and then his people as being a group project, it's really the same thing. Because really, God does all the work, and the people of God just benefit like almost completely from that. And that's kind of the way that this whole group project thing works. It's really amazing the fact that God set up this group project, him and the people of God. He made these commitments and promises. And that even, I'm sure God knew what, how the people were going to be. That even still, that the Lord God still made this covenant group project with his people as he did. Now, one of the reasons and why he was able to do that was because of what we see in Ephesians chapter 1. Because in Ephesians chapter 1, we can see what God has given to Christ, what God has given to the church, and then, like, why is covenant community important? I'm going to kind of do a little reflection on that as an application. So we'll first talk about and look quickly at what God has given to Christ. So if we look at verse 18, it says that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you and the rich are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. So Paul is writing because he wants the, the readers to know for sure. He says, I want you to know that there's this thing, this hope. And this hope, he breaks it down as that which God has called them, as well as the inheritance. Now, when you think about inheritance, inheritance is not something that you do. It just comes to you, right? The only real condition of an inheritance is, well... The person who's giving the inheritance has to die, but that's really the only condition, right? But, but you don't yourself, when to receive that, you don't really do anything, right? And so Paul is trying to let them know this inheritance is something that should really strengthen you and should really give you a new perspective on the way you do different things. So he goes on further in verse 19, and he says, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power? He uses this word greatness, power, and might. In the original language, he uses the same 
same word. Uh, in Thai, they actually use the same word. But in English, they kind of mix it up to make a little more variety. So this immeasurable greatness, this huge, huge thing that you can't even imagine, he says, what is this thing? He goes on in verse 20, and Paul says this. He says that he worked out when Christ, in Christ when he raised Christ from the dead. That's the first thing. And the second thing is that he seated Christ at his right hand. So he's talking about the way that God had given this authority. This authority, he had demonstrated that when he raised Christ from the dead, when Jesus defeated death and sin, when Jesus overcame the, 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 the most terrible enemy that's out there, which is death, when he raised him from the dead, and then secondly, the fact that God had raised Jesus to have that authority, seating him at the right hand above every other power. So he's saying this is the assurance. This is the way that he did that. This is the way that he demonstrated it. And Paul goes on, uh, and he goes on more, gets all excited, and he says, far above all rule, authority, power, and dominion. When he talks about these things in verse 21, he's not just talking about politics and, and government rulers. He's really, really, really trying to emphasize Satan and demons. Now, I know that a lot of times these days in America, we don't really talk about this a whole lot, but this is a common topic that even the listeners that Paul was writing to, this was something they were very, very aware of. And in Thailand, it's something that, that we, it's, it's a very real experience in Thailand as well. So let me illustrate it with the story of a couple of young ladies that were involved in, in our ministry. This lady right there, her name is C, and she's actually Chinese um, heritage, um, but she's Thai, uh, um, but her background is Chinese. And she was a freshman in my class, and she was a really good student. And, um, but I didn't really get to know her very well, and typically, uh, my, a lot of my students came to learn that after they were in my class, that my family would invite them to our house for dinner so we could get to know them a little bit more. But C never got invited, and she was a little bit bitter about that. Okay, So, so uh, it happened to be that we had a short-termer who was with us, and this is potential important impact of a short-termer because I know some of you guys are going to do short-term missions soon. So the, we had a short-termer with us, and this short-termer invited C to our house for a Christmas party. I didn't invite C. The short-termer <laughs> invited C to my house. And at my house, at our house, at our Christmas party, was the first time that C heard about the story of Christmas. Now, in Bangkok, Christmas is really popular. During Christmas time, it is like 100 degrees outside, but there's still Christmas tree decorations, there's Santa Claus, reindeer, snowmen, snowflakes, even though most people have never, ever experienced snow. But, but the thing is that most people in Thailand have never, ever heard what the true meaning of Christmas is. And so at our house was the first time that she heard about the meaning of Christmas, the birth, uh, the birth of Jesus Christ. Well, she was more curious she wanted to learn more, and so she started joining us for Bible studies, um, even though she wasn't a Christian, and as she was learning more and more and more, one of the big concerns that she had was that she was concerned because her family, that they're very Buddhist, um, uh, and so she was very concerned that they would not be open to even the fact that she was interested in Christianity, and so that was a big barrier for her. Well, one day, on her own, she could not deny the reality of the gospel and who Jesus was. So even in the privacy of her own room by herself, she asked Jesus to be her Lord and Savior. And, and it really began this journey of her really being passionate for the Lord, really growing and sharing with other people about the gospel as well. Even to this one young man that he's on the right side is a Chinese. He's actually Chinese. His family moved to Thailand, and then they got to know each other. Eventually, he became a Christian. And then on their wedding, they because our family got involved and helped out with the wedding ceremony, they wanted this wedding to be a very, very clear picture of the gospel and Christianity because both sides of the family, no one was a Christian. And so they wanted this to be a witness and an opportunity as it was. So C had invited some friends to the wedding, and one of the friends that she invited to this wedding was this young lady, and her name was Sue. Now, Sue, having come to the wedding... Uh, it was a few years ago, but then when she started running into a lot of difficulties in her life, she was scrolling through her Instagram, and she remembered she was at this wedding, and she remembered that at this wedding, that uh, Jesus was talked about at this wedding. So Sue, what she did was, Sue on the far left asked C 
to come to church with her, her because she wanted to know. So she came to Gospel City, Bangkok, and on that day, the very first day that Sue would ever come to church, um, she actually asked Jesus to be her Lord and Savior. Now, it wasn't because of magic or whatever, like in the sense that she became a Christian. Um, it, it was all these different things that God had been doing in her life. That day was the moment that God had planned with all these different things that God had been working in Sue's life that she became a Christian on that day. Well, <coughs> Sue, she was really, really excited about this, and so she called her mother to share the news. But before Sue could say anything, her Buddhist mother immediately asked Sue if something happened. And her mom asked her, Sue, are you playing with black magic? She said, because her mother asked this, because that very day, her mother went to consult a fortune teller. And as the fortune teller was talking about each person in their family, when she came to Sue, in the fortune teller's own words, she said, the fortune teller said, there is something stronger than me blocking me from seeing anything about Sue. Well, Sue's, so that's why Sue's mother came to the conclusion that Sue was messing around with black magic, which is actually a very common thing, uh, even for Thai Buddhists in Thailand as well. So shocked by this news, Sue decided to ask, wait, 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 mom, 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 what time was it that you went to see the fortune teller? And when they compared notes, the time that she had um, seen the fortune teller was the same time that she asked Jesus to be her Lord and Savior. In a very, very real way, that the power of Jesus really protected her in a very, very real way. Even to the point where angels and de or where demons and Satan had not any influence on watching over or even in, with the fortune teller as it was. And so in that same way, it's really a testimony of just even the supernatural work that Christ has and the fact that even when it says, Paul says, and he put all things under his feet, it's something that is a really striking image of how Jesus' authority and power is over even other Satan, even Satan and demons as well. So when we think about this picture right here in verse 22, I, I found this picture that looks something like this. Now, I know that for a lot of us, it may not be as big a deal, but for Thai people, this is an image that really is striking because in Thai culture, in Thai culture, taking your feet and pointing it at people is extremely rude. It's extremely, extremely rude. And so the idea that Jesus' feet is over even the strongest, most powerful demons and uh, powers in the world. It's a very, very striking image that would really give a really great picture of the power and authority that Jesus has, even to a Thai person. And that would also be uh, uh, applicable even for the readers of Paul as well. So that's talking about that authority that Christ, uh, that, that Christ has from the Father. Now I'll go through this next part quickly when Christ is given to the church, because it's a little bit kind of uh, self-explanatory. So if we jump ahead to Ephesians chapter 2, and I won't read this whole verse, but if you look down to verse 6, it says, and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly realms. If we take this from chapter 2, and then we compare this to Ephesians chapter 1 that we just read earlier, in Ephesians 1 it says, he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. So if you notice here, in Ephesians 1, this is speaking of the authority that God has given to Christ. In Ephesians 2, he's speaking about what God has given to us, to believers in Christ. So that same authority that he talked about in chapter 1, that means that he's also given it to the church and the body as well. And in fact, that's what Paul says here. Gave him his head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him. So that means then that God the Father has given this authority to Christ. And then this authority then that Christ has, he then gives it to the body of believers who are those who have surrendered their lives to Jesus. And then through the cross and through this covenant that now he has established, this authority that Christ has that's given by the Father to him is now accessible and given to believers. And not just to one, but to all believers as well. That means that Jesus is conquering over death and sin, that that's ours also. That means that the promise of being with Jesus in heaven forever, that that's also ours for those who are in Christ Jesus as well. Now, you know, to be honest, I don't always feel like that, right? Like, 
dun, 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 I got the power of Jesus in me. Ah, oftentimes we don't feel that way. And you know, there's something about, something that Paul says that we should know to be true, and yet sometimes it's really hard to get that which we know here down to here and in our lives, right? Like when, when you're at school and when you're in office and then they're talking about all these things that are very, very anti-Christian, and then does it make you want to go, yeah, but I'm a follower of Jesus. You take a stand or are you more like, oh, maybe it's better to kind of be quiet right now. And maybe it's because we don't understand this authority that we have in Christ. Maybe we don't understand that if we have this authority that's in Christ, that, that the way we pray ought to be really different. The way we think about the plan that God has for us ought to be really different. Now, it doesn't mean that we should be bold and like, it, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, that we should be arrogant and proud, but it should be something that really humbles us and thinks, man, with all the stupid things that I do, that, 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 that Christ He's laid this authority on me? Wow. It should really change the way we think about things and the way we go about things as well. Well, let me go on as I reflect on this last part. Um, So why is this important? If we go back to the last verse, 22 and 23, as he says, to all things, the church, there is this phrase, he says, which is his body, the fullness of of him who fills all in and all. Now, that word fullness, a lot of Bible scholars disagree about what that means. And so what I'm going to share with you is not, I'm not saying, okay, Milo says this is what it means, what Paul meant. But this is more my reflection as I thought about it and trying to figure out, so, so what's the big deal? Like, what's the application here? So when I was doing this, I went into a deep dive in YouTube, okay? And I went down the YouTube rabbit hole. I don't know why, but this whole topic came up in my YouTube feed, okay? I don't know why. And it was about diamonds. I don't know why. It just came up. You know, YouTube does, it's not explainable. Um, but as I was reading this, you know, did you ever wonder how diamonds work? Like, like, what makes a diamond shiny? Some of you young men and women out here who might be thinking about marriage and stuff like that, you, you might want to take some notes here too, okay? But the way that a diamond works the way that a diamond works is that light, white light comes into one face, uh, one facet or side. It bounces around the inside, and then based on the reflection and then the, the density of the material, blah, 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 the more reflections go on on the inside, the more the light scatters, and it looks even more beautiful on the outside. Now, that means that, that, means that this light, this white light that you look at, you cannot see the f- light in and of itself, But when it's reflected and bounced around in other faces, then you see the beauty of it. And you know, I thought to, I started to ask myself, what does this have to do with the body of Christ? And you know what? I realized the experience that I have of Jesus is Milo Cho's experience, and it's kind of one-sided in many ways. But you know what? When, when, When I share a story about what God had been doing in Thailand, you see one picture of Jesus that you wouldn't get here necessarily. But I know some of you, I'm I'm sure of it, some of you have seen Jesus as your healer. Like, you had sickness, and Jesus miraculously healed you, and you saw in a very, very experiential way that Jesus is your healer. Some of you have experienced Jesus as your restorer. Maybe that you fell into sin, and that he healed you and restored you. Maybe some of you, you experienced in a very real way how Jesus is your provider, in the midst of, I know COVID was really tough financially for a lot of people. And maybe you saw how God, or you're in the process of God showing you these different things. And then as a body together, that we see a more full picture of Christ as we experience it through one another and through the testimonies that we have with one another. And then that also means that if for someone to come into Regen here and to learn about Christ, a more full picture of Christ they'll see when they get to know more people here in Regen and hear your testimony, hear your testimony, and hear your testimony, and not just one person. That works also in the way that you serve. There's going to be a missions team going out and working out and reaching out to many students, and they're able to see and they're able to serve God in a way that may be different than someone else. That you have opportunity to be in your school that I will never be able to go to, You are able to go to your company that I will never step into, I'll never ever meet. I'm able to go to Thailand to a place where you may never go. And then we all together, as one body of Christ, share in this group project, which is this covenant community, 
and that together we're doing our part and showing Christ in the fullness of who he is and not just in us as individuals. And so that's why, even though you're here and you may not be able to go to Thailand and enjoy that one and a half dollar Pad Thai, that we can be there and enjoy that Pad Thai for you, that we can be there and be that witness of Christ that you may not be. As you go to these different places, I just learned that, that Eric, that he did all this crazy, I'm so interested. He had access to people in places that I would never have access to, that he could be a light of Christ that I would never have access to. And praise God that together, as a body, we can demonstrate Christ in that way. Not because our lives are perfect, but we're able to show broken people, messed up people as it is, who've been transformed and renewed and made alive in the gospel of forgiveness and healing and strength, and that people can see that and really see Christ and not just us. I think that's really the picture, what makes this a brilliant cut, this brilliance of Christ, this fullness of him that we can't do on our own. And so that's why we're so thankful for CCCNJ and your partnership with us. And as you are ministering in your corner of New Jersey or wherever you are, and that we're ministering in Thailand and our family in Michigan and St. Louis as it is, that we all together can participate in this big group project that the Lord has set for us. Let's pray. <clears throat> our Heavenly Father, um, many of us, for those of us who are not yet in Christ, we pray that that you would do a work that only you can do to help us to recognize that being good is certainly not good enough, doing the right thing is certainly not enough, and that what we need is to come surrendered and recognize that you alone are the one that can transform us to be this beautiful gem, and not as a gem by ourselves, but that regen together, that our, the body of Christ together, that we can demonstrate this beauty of Christ and have that fullness of Christ as well. We pray for many of us who still have a hard time knowing that this authority is ours. Really, really hard to grasp. How can the world, can, can we have this authority and such power as it is? Help us to know that in our hearts deeply, but even more, help us to know that in our hearts. May, may that influence in the way we have faith, in the way that we walk each day, in the way that we stand up for you, in the way that we will take steps of faith to do some crazy things because we know that we are in Christ in that way. So we thank you for the partnership that you have called us to, and we ask that you would help us to be faithful, faithful to you and living out this gospel calling, no matter where we may be, no matter what part we might have, so that all together with our little stories here and there, that we might show a more full picture of the beauty of Jesus Christ. So we thank you, God, for these things. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's rise and worship together.
Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. For nothing, for nothing good have I, whereby thy grace to claim. I'll wash my garments white in the blood of Calvary Lamb. Cause Jesus paid it all, all to Him I owe. Sin I left a crimson stain. something we'll ever understand, but something that we can sing is just that Jesus loves us, that despite all of our dirtiness and messed upness, that Jesus loves us. So let's sing, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me, yes I know, for the Bible tells me so. of your glory, of your kingdom, and of your power here on earth as it is in heaven. Um, and so, Father, I just pray for this upcoming week, Lord, as we go out to whatever we go out to, Lord, um, whether it be fellowship with others, whether it be work, whether it be classes, Lord, um, God, that, uh, Lord, we just be able to experience more and more the fullness of your glory, of your kingdom, and your power. Amen. You may be seated. 
the Holy Spirit is always moving, so I don't need to say that he's moving amongst us, but I do hear him speaking to all of us today, and I hope you'll hear his voice as well. Um, now we're going to move into some time of um, welcome and announcements. Um, we have several visitors. Um, Shan Shan invited uh, Tianping Zhao. Yeah, are you here? Shan Shan, if you can. Hi, welcome to our church. And Leona Lu. Leona Lu. Okay, so everybody say hi to back there near, near Kevin. Thank you. Welcome to our church. You may be seated. And then we have um, Derek and Angela Leung, invited by Google. Um, could you uh, stand up so that we could recognize you and welcome you to our church? Derek and Angela Leung, and I see you have little ones as well. Welcome. Very great to have you. Um, another couple uh, is Tom and Lucita, invited by, looks like, Zach Chen. Welcome to our church. So great to have you. Everybody, please remember to uh, say hi to the newcomers when um, service has concluded. Uh, now, we just have a couple of announcements. Um, our lineup for the next two uh, Sundays, uh, we have some, some guys speaking on Angels Unaware next weekend. And then, Lord willing, um, let's continue praying for Pastor Paul's um, health. Um, he is planning to come back to speak to us on Ecclesiastes 11, Principles of Giving. So looking forward to Pastor Paul giving the word to us um, in two Sundays. Um, Regen prayer meetings continue on Wednesdays at 8 o'clock. Um, it is uh, still online, and we welcome you to come join us. And then um, there is no Regeneration Adult Sunday School in August, and just a reminder on that. Um, and then here's a picture of our 2023 volleyball champs, which is Yam. And the runner-up, which is a youth group. Congratulations. Outstanding. Let's see what the next slide is. Let me see if I can follow along. Okay. Uh, AV team. If everybody could turn and look back behind the glass over there, there's a team of folks who are busy at work to make sure that the whole service runs smoothly, whether it is the speaker's audio, whether it's the slides, whether it is music. Um, we need more volunteers. We do have um, a need. Um, the team asked me to emphasize that no technical um, skills are required, so don't think that you have to be an electrical engineering major. However, if you're a double E major, I'm sure you would find a lot of things like impedance and resistance, things like that interesting. But all you need is a willing heart to help out and make sure that the voice of God and the speakers uh, are heard. So uh, please speak to Victor or to Kevin Liao uh, if, if you are interested. Um, that's going to conclude our service for today. If um, I could ask everybody to stand for doxology, and then afterwards I will invite um, Pastor Milo to give us the benediction. the benediction and now may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ who is seated above all authorities in heaven and earth the father of glory give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him having the eyes of your hearts enlightened that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you regen and to what are the riches of the glorious inheritance of the saints amen after a moment of silent meditation you are dismissed from the service thank you for coming to the regeneration <laughs>